On this episode of Locked On Lightning, the Lightning are back in action tonight. Can they keep the good times rolling? All that coming up and more on Locked On Lightning. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Locked On Lightning. And just a reminder that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. On this episode of Locked On Lightning, Lightning are back in action. Can they keep climbing up the standings? They just recently got back into the playoff hunt, as well as we talk about the lack of production lately from the Blue Liners, as well as we we kind of check in with tonight's game uh, against the Florida Panthers. Uh, but before we get into all that, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. You could also follow us on our YouTube page as well as give me a follow on Twitter at Danky Dank, D-E-N-K-Y-D-8-N-K. Love hearing from all of you. And drop a comment below this video so we can have the keep the conversation going as the Lightning are back in action tonight against the Florida Panthers. And, you know, winners of their last three, one has to ask right away, especially now that they are back in action and it seems like every, the Lightning have found their their niche or or really the the winning formula uh to get things going really one has to ask you know can they keep climbing up the, up the up the standings because it, it seemed as though like a month ago or even the beginning of december that it, it seemed as though that this lightning team was just really completely out of it and it, it seemed like Boston, at least from my point of view at that point in time, uh, really was starting to run away with it and, and pad their lead. Um, as well as it, it kind of seemed like Toronto was kind of starting to falter. Florida was starting to fall back. But the Lightning weren't taking advantage of all of that, of course. Uh, but now we find ourselves on December 27th. Uh, with the Lightning a point behind the Florida Panthers for that third spot in the Atlantic Division. And it just so happens that the Lightning are playing the Panthers tonight and unfortunately not winning that one right now. I mean, there's still quite a lot of hockey to be played in that game. The current score at the ter- at the time of this recording is 3-2 Panthers with 13-47 left in the third period. And... If, you know, th- there are some things that the Lightning need to do. Um, obviously, other the, the one thing, the one glaring thing really is Mikhail Sergachev. He needs to get healthy. He needs to get back in lineup, and he needs to start playing well. But I, I think when we look at this Lightning team and, and we look at how they have played thus far over the last week or so, over the last really couple of weeks, um, you've seen a, a very good, big difference in this team a gradual improvement which is something that we have not seen all season long and and obviously a big part of that has to do with Andre Vasilevsky what he has done in his limited amount of time back uh after missing the first couple of months of the season due to injury um that he sustained while working out in the offseason and as we've always spoken about on this show with Vazzy is that his biggest his biggest contribution to this team other than stopping pucks and limiting goals is that he is able to instill a level of confidence in in his team that is really unmatched across the league when you look at other goaltenders. I mean, maybe I'm being biased here, but I mean, you look at past years, especially the Stanley Cup winning years and and even the year that they went to the finals and lost to the Avalanche. And you could even look at the latter games of last year's series against the Toronto Maple Leafs. 
is that when he is on, when he is playing as well as anybody in the league, the rest of this team goes out and plays so much more looser. They just play so much more better. And we're seeing it since he's come back. And and really, when it comes down to it is that he takes the amount of things that the Lightning need to worry about. I And I think can really very much so condenses, condenses it into... They just have to score more goals than the opposing team. And while we're on the subject of Vasilevsky, I just want to bring something up that was brought to my attention on the previous episode because just because I feel like there was a mix up. Um, I was talking about Vasilevsky and shootouts and and I said that, you know, he wasn't good. And then, of course, you know, people came into the 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 comments and you know said all this and that and how he's ranked here all time and he's ranked there all time and that's all good and grand but when you look at last year uh his save percentage in shootouts was 76 point 76 and a half and that's what i was really alluding to that last year he didn't do as good of a job as you would have liked to have seen him do um in shootouts but i just wanted to throw that out because i thought about it um and I just wanted to let everybody know. But really, getting back to Vasilevsky this year, um, as he did do a good job in that shootout for the most part uh, in the previous game against the Washington Capitals, of course. I mean, they won. So he did a good enough job to get pick up the win. Um, when we look at this Lightning team, and now that you have Vasilevsky back, Sergachev, you're hoping, is going to be back in the conversation sooner rather than later and you look at the the teams surrounding the tampa bay lightning in the standings as well as the teams coming up on the schedule you can't help but wonder about the chances of this team possibly gaining some ground on the boston bruins because you know that's really the goal here right and has been the goal uh, for this Tampa Bay Lightning team for quite some time and, and for this fan base for quite some time, at least during the regular season, is that, you know, I feel like when you look at this Tampa team and, and well, just this organization in general, and you're laying out the in-season goals, obviously division championship is definitely on, on the table. Um, I didn't think so much this year because, you know, just with the slow start and obviously Vasilevsky kind of not playing well last year or playing up to the standards that we have with him. Um, you know, I was trying to be a little bit more realistic coming into this season by saying, let's just get to the playoffs and, and go from there. But um, really at the end of the day, now when you look at the standings and you look at these teams that are surrounding the lightning, uh, you have Florida ahead of you by one point at this point in time. And then you got Washington tied with you and then you got carolina and new jersey and i guess we could even throw detroit in there uh nipping at your heels i will say you know it's not out of the question um for this team to want to go and try and win the division title there's a lot of things that need to happen not only on the lightning side but across the league uh for that to happen but it's it's not something that I think is impossible. And I don't think it's something that we shouldn't take into consideration. But having said that, I think that what Lightning fans should do, as well as this team, your goal right now is just to make the playoffs. And I know that's kind of contradictory towards what I've always said, you know, and I've criticized this team for in the, in the past, during their cup years where they had this 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 state of mind you know let's just get into the playoffs doesn't matter where we we finish but you know those were different circumstances because i felt like that team given the level of talent and the role that they were on were able to achieve so much more where now this team is kind of i feel like an underdog which is i think is a perfect place where you would want to have your team uh, be at playing from is, and that's a, an underdog. So I, I think that, you know, 
is a division division title very much in the conversation and in the realm of possibility absolutely but is it something that we should really be holding our hearts out for no i i think that just get in the playoffs and and let uh your team do damage then and so let me know in the comments below where you think what is your expectations for this team going forward especially if they continue to play at the level of play that they have exhibited in the last couple of weeks uh and coming up on the show we'll be talking about the lack of production from the goal uh from the defenseman this season and and as well as recently and and how that could possibly change as well so we'll talk about that in just a little bit but first i want to talk about one of our sponsors on today's show and that is our friends over at game time now if you haven't heard about game time well listen up okay i recently just bought tickets uh over the past over this past summer to a met game really last minute i'm talking like i had 20 minutes to get to the stadium i bought them on the way there and they were against the atlanta braves these tickets they were last minute and i was able to get those tickets not only in the nick of time without any seat obstruction but for a killer deal and the best part about that experience was that I didn't have to worry because with game time, as well as you, you shouldn't have to worry when, when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So as always, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are streaming in audio form. That's Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, wherever they are. We are there as well as subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up button below this video as well as drop a comment below to join in on the conversation. Uh, so we're looking at the Tampa blue line and, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the conversation we just had about this Tampa team, you know, where is the ceiling for them? How f now that they're finally back in the playoff conversation after really not being near it. And, and I will say that I haven't really been paying attention to the standings. Uh, all that much to start the season. I'm more concerned about the team getting going because as you all know, or really should know, is that you really shouldn't be taking standings seriously until about American Thanksgiving or even around this time of year. That's probably the good kind of like time frame just because kind of like what you're getting from your team now is kind of what you're, most likely going to get for the rest of the season and one of the things that now that the lightning are back in the playoff hunt and they're back in the conversation one of the things that has kind of bothered me throughout the course of this year has been the lack there of of offensive production from the lightning defensive core uh victor hedman leads all defensemen on this team with five goals uh he also leads them all an assist with 28 assists and that even goes for Mikhail Sergachev who is second on the team set two goals 17 assists and I don't think that's a winning recipe I don't think that is something that you know as much as we could sit here and and as we do on almost a weekly basis as much as we talk up the lightning offensive firepower which I, I mean very much talented probably one of i would probably say top 10 in the league uh and and you know I, that's probably as close as you're gonna get from me in terms of 
not being biased because I mean, this is an NHL that we live in now where every team has two to three guys that are just absolutely filthy and skilled and, and just can do almost everything. And that's just the way it is. You never were able to have that. And the lightning were lucky at one point, And even you could consider it now to have two, two lines that could do that. Um, but now in today's NHL, even with that, I feel like it's not enough. I feel like it's not enough, especially if we're set on Tampa Bay getting back to a division title. It's going to take more than two to three lines of forwards scoring points here and there um, to, to get to that, especially when you're going up against teams as formidable as the Boston Bruins, as well as the Maple Leafs. And, and even, you know what, we'll throw in the Panthers there because they are a very good team. I mean, they made it all the way to Stanley Cup final last year and cannot take them lightly. So really where the Lightning could separate themselves is their offensive scoring from their defensemen. Now, Victor Hedman, after having a disappointing year last year, after previously two years ago coming off a 20 goal season which was a career high for him uh did not perform well last year and and you know we did have a little bit of a bright spot spot to start off the season with nick pervix last year which was great and but since then even the beginning of the season he hasn't really been all that per, all that productive he has seven assists but other than that, I mean, he's not really doing much of anything to really separate himself uh, as, you know, the offensive defenseman that, you know, maybe we thought he could have been uh, last year. And, and I think a lot of it, and this might sound a little ridiculous to some, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, what it comes down to with this lighting team, and I think that, unfortunately, they don't do a good enough job of they don't allow their defensemen, especially the Sergachevs, the Headmans, um, even Darren Radish, I'll put up there. Um, even let's say, you know, Nick Pervix as well, and even Chernak. Um, let's just say the whole defensive core. I feel like the defensive core could benefit a lot more from taking more shots, uh, oftentimes, which is fine. Uh, the Lightning like to get the puck in deep. They like to to cycle it around the circles, which is fine. I mean, that's just your game. You like to shoot it through traffic and stuff. But I feel like oftentimes we don't see a lot of opportunities for the defensemen. And, and the thing with that is that it'll benefit this team because it'll give the opposing team a different look. Um, you know, on the same hand with that, Really, the, the two guys on this team that are good at shooting through traffic more than most on this team are, are Sergachev and, and Hedman, and that's why they're the two better offensive defensemen on this team. But I think that we still have to allow guys to get going. And I think that really, especially with you know, some of the teams that the Lightning will be going up against, uh, even this week, uh, the New York Rangers, uh, who are one of the best teams in the league, um, you're going to have to give those teams those different looks because those are teams that are not afraid of blocking shots, clogging shooting lanes, uh, who have very good goaltenders. And they're going to be very on guard on on those nights against guys like Kucherov, Hagel, Point, Paul, Stamkos, the guys that are playing down low, uh, you know, Stamkos doesn't play down low, but you know, he's in the, he's in the circle. And whenever the puck goes towards his way, New York's going to get ready to dive in front of that uh, Shesterkin or quick, whoever plays in that, I would imagine it's probably going to be Shesterkin. Um, those guys are going to be ready for that one timer. And, I think that that is the perfect opportunity for the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, to get some more shots from the blue line, especially through traffic, because the Lightning do a very good job of creating traffic in front. I think it's only a matter of, of, of like I said, giving different looks 
and and kind of flipping the script a little bit here and there. Uh, and I'm not saying I want Hedman and Sergachev and Dahan and and all these defensemen taking five shots a game. No, but at the same time, you know, I would like to see me maybe two to three quality shots. Um, you know, I I spoke about it on the last podcast. I I don't mind when the Lightning have low shot numbers. Uh, last game they had twenty. But at the same time, in these games against these very good teams, uh, 20 shots isn't going to do it, uh, especially with these teams that are very good at puck possession. They're very good at 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 blocking shots and and shooting and shutting down shooting lanes. So it's really important that you you really do a good job of populating the net with all these shots and and really just banging it off the goaltender to see, you know, what if he's giving anything away if he's if he's maybe weak on one side and and i think that's you know where your defensive core comes in and i think that if you want to separate yourself like i said from other teams and in order to climb up the standings not only in the wild card but in your own division uh you're gonna have to do certain things that are maybe gonna separate yourself from other teams and and right now with the Tampa Bay lightning the best way to do that is to get your defensemen more offensively uh engaged so Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, we'll see that. I would imagine, especially these against some of these big games that they have coming up, not only to end 2023, but to beginning of 2024, uh, those games are going to definitely going to be heat check games. They're going to be games in which the Lightning are going to be, be thoroughly tested. And I think that what other way to answer the bell than to have your defensemen get heavily involved as well on both sides of the ice. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. And coming up, we're going to check in with that game against the Florida Panthers in just a bit. But first, I want to talk about our last sponsors of the night, and that is our friends over at FanDuel. Now, listen, I don't know about you. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Uh, but I was also sitting on the couch betting on football all day. And the, I was doing that with our friends over at FanDuel. And if you have never bet before, you got to go in and bet now with FanDuel because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wider range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. If you've been wanting to bet on lightning uh, lightning games, guess what? The the spread is super easy to bet on because every hockey game it's one and a half. So if you want to bet on the puck line, that's what we call the spread in hockey. If you think the lightning are going to win by two goals or more, you bet on the puck line. If you think that they're going to either lose by two goals or more or, or win the game outright, you got to go there and you could also bet them at plus one and a half. I believe they were probably on the spread tonight plus one and a half tonight. So that would have been a good um, a good time to bet the puck line on them uh, tonight, especially with them being down right now by one goal and having a lot of hockey to play. But go ahead to FanDuel right now. So right now slash locked on and kick off your season with FanDuel right now. Remember, you get $150 in bonus bets. So visit FanDuel once again, dot com slash locked on and kick off your season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. As always, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We're also available on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel there as well. So Checking in with the game now, the Lightning are down 3-2 with 2.54 left in the third period. Uh, of course, playing against the Florida Panthers, Lightning goals coming from Nikita Kucherov, his 24th of the season, as well as a power play goal from Mikey Esamont, his sixth of the season. Assist on that from Brandon Hagel and Darren Radish. And, you know, if, if, if I had to judge this game thus far, um, just looking at the box score, and I would say, you know, this is a B for the Lightning. You're down one to your rival, which is fine. Um, 
you know, the one thing I do not appreciate, which I will say, is that Lightning were down 2 nothing at one point, which is not anything you ever want to happen, especially in a game like this. Uh, but the Lightning seem like they're doing a very good job of, of shooting a lot. They currently have 29 shots on goal. Um, their face-off percentage has been a little bit down in this one. Uh, they have their 0 for 3 on the power play. And what a better time than to possibly get one than now a power play goal. If they could draw a penalty uh, within the last two and a half minutes. Um, the thing that obviously sticks out to me right now for this Lightning team and could be the tale of the game or the story of the game uh, once we look back possibly on a Lightning loss is the giveaways. Lightning are, have given away the puck three, uh, 11 times tonight as opposed to the Florida Panthers only giving up the puck three times, which could be something of an issue, uh, a neutral zone issue, which, of course, we'll talk about all of that uh, on tomorrow's episode as we'll recap tonight's game. But I, like I always say, it's always very important for this Lightning team to win these kind of games. And it's always important to really take seriously what these games mean uh, for the Lightning right now because i think they're great heat check moments like i said when we went to this stretch um playing against very good teams it's it's always nice to see uh what kind of lightning team is going to get rolled out on any given night especially against these very good teams as the lightning pull vasileski and now it is six on five uh with over a minute left in the third period and i'm very curious to see when the smoke clears after the ranger game and even the montreal canadian game i think that um as the lightning uh take a penalty on the five on on the six on five and now the panthers on the are on the power play which is unbelievable but anyway <laughs> um i can't wait to see what this stretch of games to end 2023 does for this lightning team because it could, if they allow it to, it will benefit them immensely and help them out and become a better team. And I think that is something you definitely want, especially with the upcoming schedule in the month of January uh, coming up for the Tampa Bay Lightning. As like I've stated multiple times, you know, it's very tough stretch here to end December, but it doesn't get any more easier as the season continues. So we'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully the Lightning maybe could pull off a miracle from now until the end of the game and we'll be talking about this game tomorrow on tomorrow's episode so go ahead and tune in for that so in the meantime that's been it for this episode of locked on lightning part of the lockdown podcast network i'm your host adam tanker i'll talk to you in the next one